Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in this video I wanted to show you how you can host a simple static website such as my blog that I've got here at the moment uh, within Azure and now this costs under a dollar a month. Pretty simple small uh, blog but you know this is a pretty inexpensive way for you to run a nice simple blog uh, or a static web page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I've currently got mine up and running then I'm going to take you through the steps of how you can do this for yourself. So should be no surprise, everything is going to happen within the Azure portal. Now, before I do anything within this Azure portal, I want to kind of point you to a playlist that I have for getting set up in Azure if you don't have an Azure account. Uh, and that will also take you through setting up, you know, uh, budgets and stuff like that, because you need to have cost management in your Azure tenant to stop you from doing, you know, getting any unexpended uh, unexpected costs especially if you are learning the environment um, you know you're deploying stuff playing around and all of a sudden you have a thousand dollar bill right so you want to make sure that you have budgets and alerts put in place now I'll have a playlist uh, up here somewhere uh, for you to check out um, so make sure you watch at least uh, the, how to set up the account and how to get the budgets uh, set up and then you can come back to this video um, that's just my recommendation anyways now let's get into uh, having a look how I've actually got my website running and then I'll walk you through it, uh, how you can get it set up for yourself. So if we come into storage accounts and we go into my TikTok's website. So the storage account has, you know, it can do a lot of things, right? Uh, it can be file shares, it can hold, you know, just general static files within Azure for whatever you might be doing in Azure, but it can also serve a way of serving a static website and it's actually really easy to do so on the little left hand pane here if we scroll down let me just make my screen a bit bigger for you so if we just scroll down a bit we can see here there's actually a static website under data management so if we click on static website we enabled the static website here so this is under enabled and this immediately gives us a endpoint url to be able to connect to our static website so what do we we just say hey look there's going to be a file index.html that i want you to resolve when someone resolves this URL. It's that simple. Now, where's all that stored? We can see that any storage that we want to do with our static website will be in the web folder. So if we go into containers, go into web, here we can see here, this is all my static website stuff. So I just paste it all in here and we can see the index.html file that I've said and when they connect to it, so let's just back up a bit looking at that link that we got before, if I actually go to this, that should still resolve my website as well. So if I paste this in and I hit enter, my website still resolves on this URL as well because this is just that index.html file that's sitting in my storage account. It's that simple. And then what I've got here, you can see that I'm actually using a custom domain name with, um, you know, it's got an SSL cert and stuff like that. So on a static website, you can set custom domain names on a storage account but it you can't do HTTPS right uh, and to do that the documentation let me just show you so you can see here uh, in the Azure documentation for setting a custom domain name to a static website it's you know we can natively um, support HTTP access for your custom domain because Azure storage natively supports it right but to enable HTTPS you have to use an Azure CDN right and I have got a CDN set up so I've so if I come back into Azure and I go into CDN, you'll see here that I've got a CDN profile and within the CDN profile, I've got an endpoint and that endpoint is actually my storage account. And then what this does is that I've linked a custom domain name to this uh, endpoint and when that endpoint is resolved, it just brings up my web page, my static web page. And the CDN actually manages the SSL cert for me as well. So I've just clicked into the endpoint and you can see here uh, certificate successfully deployed. So it's got all the SSL and everything for me. So I can use the HTTPS, which is awesome. As let's just quickly show you, I'll show you the billing that I've got for this current billing period for this, just so you know what the cost is looking like. So I'm just going to go to the resource group that's actually hosting my storage account. And I'm just gonna come down here to cost analysis. And we'll just let this load. Now we'll just make sure that we're for the current billing period. So this is from the 22nd of July to the 21st of August, which is fine. And you can see here, the actual cost is one cent New Zealand dollars, right? And we can see here that the CDN has been less than one cent. Uh, the storage is tiny and the bandwidth is tiny. Now, of course, if you've got a really popular site, your, your bandwidth and stuff is going to increase and you're gonna be paying for the network traffic that does go through in and out. 
Um, and, and if you've got a heavy static web page, then of course the storage is going to go up. But for a simple blog, this is cheap as chips and it's a lot better than running it on like a container or running it on a uh, VM. You've seen how I've got my one running. Uh, you've seen the cost. Now let's let me show you how you can get this set up for yourself. So what you want to do is you want to come into Azure and you want to go into storage accounts. You want to create a storage account. You want to create a resource group for your storage account. So we'll just create a new one. I'm just going to call this uh, RG TikToks video and click OK and give the storage account a name. The SA TikToks video. Uh, choose your region. Now remember regions have a lot of um, play on price and uh, connection speeds and all of that stuff. I normally choose, choose the region closest to me so that will be Australia East. And now here you can choose redundancy. You know, um, again, redundancy has a price to it. Uh, the better redundancy, the higher the cost, of course. Uh, I'm just going to go for locally redundant storage because this is just a simple blog. Worst case scenario, if you know uh, the whole the local region goes down and my hope my web page isn't running, it's okay. I can it doesn't bother me if it's down for a few hours or a few minutes or whatever, right? So I'm going to hit next for advanced. Here we can pretty much leave a lot of these as default. We go next and again i'll leave these as default again leaving these as default uh add some tags so i normally add what sort of environment this is so this is just a testing environment um and i normally add an owner which is me nick this is just like best practice stuff you don't have to add tags if you don't want to but i'm just used to adding tags and i'm going to hit review and create and i'm going to create the storage account Okay, so now we can see that the deployment is in progress and my storage account is being made, which is awesome. Let's just jump to that resource group and we'll wait for that storage account to come up. Cool, my storage account is now here. You can see it here. Cool, so what we can do is we can come into here and again, like uh, you just want to make sure that the static website uh, functionality is enabled. So we click, uh, actually before I do that, let me just show you. We come into containers. See, we've only got logs here. So it's not until we enable the static website that we get the web container. And now I know that my index document name is going to be called index.html. So I'm just going to put that in here for now, even though there's nothing in there. And if you've got a custom 404, like, you know, when you get the era 404 uh, things, you can have your own custom HTML file for that as well. And that's where you would put this. And now if I come back up to containers, we can now see that we have that web file, which is awesome. The web container. Now here is where we will put all of our web pages and our folders and all of that. Now, the, f the funny thing is though here, you can't upload folders, only files. So if you try to upload a folder uh, via this method, it won't let you, uh, it will only put the files in. So if you want to upload folders and stuff like that, as you can see in my one, I had, you know, all the folders, you will need to use either um, the AZ command line, which is the Azure command line, um, I think Visual Studio can um, has functionality to do it as well. But I just use the Azure Storage Explorer, which is just an application you would download on your computer. And you sign into your Azure environment and you can access the storage accounts via that uh, application. And I'll show you that now. So this is it here. It's just called Microsoft Azure Storage Explorer. So I'm just going to click on that. And this is just going to load up. Now I'm already logged into this. So I should see all of my things pop up under here, under my subscription. So if you haven't, you'll have to click in on the left here and you would have to sign in here i'll leave a link in the description for where you download this as well so you download it um click on the little connection tab here and choose how you want to connect in um you can connect in via the subscription so if you click on this one here it will just pop up with an azure login prompt you enter your credentials and then you should be able to see everything within your azure environment so again since i'm logged in you can see the uh, msdn thing here again i'm sorry it's a bit small i don't know if i can zoom in there we go i've just zoomed in a bit so now you can see that we've got my two storage accounts here so again this is where i if i want to make changes to my website I just, you know, I make my code changes and then I just copy the files over. And once this loads, you can see here, blob containers and inside web, I've got all my files. And this is just where I make the changes to my website. Now, it's going to be the same for the static TikToks video one. So if we come into blob containers web, we just have an empty container now. So this is how, this is the tool I use uh, for uploading all my content to my container because i use folders and stuff if you just got pure files you know sure you can upload it via the portal but this is a great uh, tool for doing that stuff as well so let me just mock up a quick basic website um 
I'm no designer, <laughs> I'm no web designer, but I'll just make some simple uh, uh, HTML file. I'll chuck it in here and then we'll see if we can hit it. Right, so let's just make something real quick, quick and easy. Uh, H1, um, this is my static website. Minimize this and now I'm gonna uh, put that file in here. So I click upload. So inside my video file here, if I just put this one in, yep, I wanna upload this in here and I'm gonna hit upload. You can see it's now been transferred to web and there it is, cool. So now let's come back in the Azure and see if we can hit that web page. So we're back in here, if I hit refresh, we can see our file is now there, which is awesome. Now, if we go into that storage account where it is, and if we scroll down and we look for the static website, and we copy this link, and we paste this in, there we go. This is my static website, right? There you go. You now have a static website that you can use. So if you don't want to pay for a custom domain name, use this one, I guess. Um, but now let's look at how we can get this actually connected up with our CDN, right? So what we can do is come back here and we want to create a CDN. So if I come home, CDN profiles, create. I'm going to put this in the ex uh, existing resource so I keep all my uh, website stuff together in one resource group. So we'll put it in there. Name, TikToks, video, CDN. Leave that as global. I'm just going to use the standard Microsoft one. Uh, I'm going to leave documentation in this video if you want to know more about, you know, just the CDNs itself and pricing tiers and all of that stuff. So I'll leave all the documentation in the description of this video. I'm going to choose Microsoft. Uh, so again, the, the pricing tiers and like uh, the Akamai and stuff like that have their own um, like bandwidth stuff, I'm pretty sure, and just a whole different like kind of times around things and how quick one is over another and that. I found that the standard Microsoft one works fine for what I'm doing. Now what we want to do is click on create a new CDN endpoint and we're going to click here and we'll give this an endpoint. So TikTok's video uh, endpoint. No, just put a name in there. And you can see that this is all good. That name is and the origin type is going to be a storage static website and we should now see our one so yep there's our static website click that tags again i'm going to add some tags add an environment review and create we're happy with that oh we'll hit create and now that's going to create our cdn for us so again like i mentioned before we're creating the cdn because we want to have our custom domain name right um and over https again if you just want to use http fine you can just use the storage account no problem but the cdn also just gives you a lot more cool functionality with having you know your website cached all over um all the all the locations uh that azure has so if someone's you know on the other side of the world it's cached there and anyone else tries to load it it's you know a lot quicker and it makes also uh, making changes to your website real easy. So when you make a change, you can actually purge uh, the cache that it has of your website and it reflects the changes to your, your, your new changes of your website a lot quicker as well, which is cool. So let's just wait for this to deploy. Cool, apparently it's there. So if I click here, we now are all set up. Uh, so this, we've got our CDN profile. Now it's probably adding our endpoint, which we'll just wait for. Then once our endpoint's created, it should show up under here. Cool, we can see the deployment succeeded now. Uh, so if I hit refresh, or if I just change the view, we can now see our endpoint is here, which is awesome. Now, if we come into our endpoint, we've now got our endpoint host name here, uh, and we could connect to it over HTTPS, you know, with the TikTok's video endpoint, which was the name. So we could connect to that, and that should give us also a our website. Uh, but I doubt it's ready yet. Yeah, so it's not quite ready yet. It'll be ready in a few minutes, but that gives us time to get our custom domain name all set up. So let's just come back to the portal. And what you want to do in your endpoint is actually come to custom domains and if we click here we can add our custom domain that we want to use now what we want to do is pretty much get this all set up now what to get this all set up what i will normally do is i'll click on this learn more here because this actually gives you a nice guide uh, to follow for what how you need to set this up on your dns provider site as well so if you've got a, your own domain name this is how you do it so on here add a custom domain uh, to your endpoint so as it's saying, you've got to have a CDN, which we have. We have a custom domain name. Um, you can either let Azure handle your DNS or you just have to create a CNAME record in your DNS provider. We'll be doing this one here. So essentially all we need to do is in our DNS provider, come down, all we need to do is say that our, our custom domain, our subdomain that we want associated with this, 
the C name record and just grab our edge uh, name that we had and you just create a C name record for that and you should be good to go. So I'm going to go create that uh, subdomain now in my DNS provider and then I'm going to go back into Azure and get that uh, custom domain name validated. So again, I'm just making a C name record now. So I'm going to create a subdomain for this. So I'll call this test which is fine. So test.tickdocs.nz and the target will be that edge name. So let me quickly go grab that. So this is it here. So let's just grab that. Place that as our target. I'm going to turn the proxy status off and hit save. And now if I say this is the custom host name, which was just test.tickdocs.nz, this might not go through straight away because I've just made that name, but we'll see what happens. I'll click add. There we go. Cool. It was happy with it. And it's creating the CDN custom domain name now. So we can track the progress just at the top here uh, with the alert. Cool, it's all happy. So it says it can take up to 10 minutes for test.tickdocs.nz uh, settings to reach every CDN pop, which is fine, that's fine. Uh, DNS is always a pain, it's always slow, um, but we'll get there. So now we've got that here, we can click on the custom domain name and we can say custom domain name HTTPS, right? We want HTTPS, so let's click on. We're gonna have our certificate managed by the CDN and we're gonna hit save. And now it's going to update the custom domain name. Now I've looked this up, I'm willing to be proved wrong, but I believe, and, and from what I've read, the CDN managed certificate is free. There is no cost to it, which is awesome. And it just makes it so much easier to handle certificates. But again, as you can see here, you can bring your own certificate and store it in Azure Key Vault, or you can even purchase it through Key Vault, which is cool as well. So now that's going to update the custom domain name. So that's cool. And now you can see here, it's going to go through a status. Um, sorry, it's going to go through some checks. So it's going to submit the request uh, for our HTTPS to be uh, validated it's then going to do uh, a domain validation so that's going to confirm that that c name record is there azure and microsoft and whatnot are happy with that um, also during that stage you can also send down emails to that domain name um, and i believe it's like uh, admin at your domain name and a few, uh, few others now i don't have any of those email addresses set up so if it gets stuck on this domain validation for more than maybe like say a few hours i would suggest maybe just letting uh, microsoft know saying hey look i don't have any of these domain names set up uh to receive email so i don't have any of these email accounts set up to re re uh, receive the validation and they can normally validate it on their end for you but i don't have any of those set up and mine still validated fine so it's just a matter of maybe waiting for a couple hours for this to actually come through so as you can see here now, if we've just come back to the endpoint, the custom domain name now is still just uh, val validating. It's just pending domain validation approval. But well, let's just check that the host name here itself is all up and running. There we go. I've just used that uh, edge domain name and this is my static website. So now it's all up and running, which is awesome. And now once that custom domain name comes validated, we'll just be able to access it via that one. Just how I am using my one here, log.tickdocs.nz. And let me just quickly show you just to verify for you that that's how I've also got my one set up with that custom domain name. So if I come down here, sorry, wrong one. If I come into my CDN profiles and I go into my TikTok CDN, I come into my endpoint, you can see that I have a, my custom domain name here and the certificate's been successfully deployed. So it's gone through those stages. So if I just click in here, you can see that it's gone through these steps. And again, I don't have any of those email accounts set up. Uh, it just validated on its own just after a couple hours, which is awesome. Um, and that is how you can host your own static website for really cheap um, in Azure. So I hope you learned a lot. Uh, if you've got any questions, please reach out to me on, on my Twitter, uh, on my LinkedIn, um, or just in the comments of this video and I'll be more than willing to help if you've got any issues. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, bye.